evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to HAR Live. Today, we have a very exciting story for you about one of Australia's most important animals. So important, in fact, that we've built a giant 15 metre tall statue of it. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we'll be talking about the Australian Merino. Our brave reporter, Ben, is out on the scene. Ben, can you tell us a little bit about these creatures? Thanks, Ben. As you can see, I'm out here in the very real plains of New South Wales, surrounded by some very real merino wool sheep. And these sheep have been some of the most influential in history, and that's because they're known for having the finest and the softest fur of any sheep. These animals are herbivores, which means you can often find them grazing away at grass all day. And they love living in open fields. Um, could you tell us about, you know, why we've domesticated these animals? Sheep were among the first animals to be domesticated around 11,000 years ago. This is because they possess many characteristic traits that are desirable for domestication, such as a medium size, a docile nature and high fertility, as well as providing many benefits for us humans. How so? Well, generally sheep were bred for meat, milk and skins, but because the wool was so high quality on the merino, they were bred almost exclusively for shearing and were very rarely eaten by us humans. Well, thanks, Ben. Uh, I'm now going to introduce our next very special guest. This is Dr. Benjamin Woolenhorn. Thanks for coming on the show, Ben. Oh, thanks for having me. So, Ben, I was hoping you'd be able to tell us a little bit more about the other interactions that merino sheep might have with humans. Absolutely. Uh, today, the Aussie merino has been so intensively crossbred that it can produce up to 10 times the amount of wool than its original Spanish variety. Whilst this is great for the economy, it also means that these sheep are now entirely dependent on us humans because they literally cannot survive properly without being regularly shorn. If shearing is neglected, the massive amounts of wool that these guys produce can lead to overheating, mobility issues, and even blindness. Wow, it sounds like their wool could just grow forever. It's actually believed that if left unchecked, the Merino's coat could actually continue to grow forever. All right, so if anyone watching would like to buy a merino sheep, what kind of factors should they be looking for and what determines uh, their worth? <laughs> well, look, the good news is that these guys are pretty common and you'll find them just about anywhere in agricultural auctioning. Uh, you can determine their worth based off their size, weight, fleece density and age. The bad news is because they're at such high demand, these guys will sell for a pretty penny. In fact, in 1989, a Collinsville Merino Ram was sold for a world record price of... Let's give you a second. Let's see here. $450,000 for a sheep? What? How do I start selling sheep? Where do I sign up? Okay, okay. So their wool can grow forever, but is this sustainable and... You know, should we be concerned about the welfare of these animals? The main welfare issues to do with the merino involve its skin and a disease called fly strike. Merinos are specifically bred to have large folds and wrinkles in their skin to produce a more robust coat and have higher yields. During the Aussie summers, moisture trapped between these folds can act as the perfect breeding ground for flies and other parasites. The larvae produced eventually hatch and eat the sheep alive causing a plethora of infection risks, and I'm sure it isn't very pleasant for the sheep either. To combat this, farmers use the process called mulesing, which involves shearing the rear skin off a sheep and surgically tightening all the skin around it to remove those wrinkles. Unfortunately, this is often done without anaesthetic or painkillers and is obviously extremely painful for the sheep. Are there any laws against that? Or, you know, do they have any rights to welfare? there isn't actually any mandated laws that ban mulesing. However, the Australian government is heavily considering doing so on January 2022. We went out and interviewed a few people downtown to see what the public thinks of this. And my opinion is that the merino wool industry is so important to the Australian economy that I don't really care how that wool is retrieved. If this mulesing is what it takes, then so be it, because when all said and done, it's the wool that benefits the most people. So I own a farm and I own a flock of merino sheep and I love them the bits. But at the end of the day, mulesing is what protects my sheep from fly strike. And we can't possibly ban this without a reliable alternative. 
I mean, yeah, yeah, I know there's those painkillers and I know there's that staining process which uses liquid nitrogen to get rid of the skin rather than shaving it off, but it's incredibly lengthy to administer, still painful, it's stupid expensive, and it would completely collapse the wool market. What do you think the future is for these animals and what might affect that future of theirs? Look, there's no doubt that as long as there's plenty of food and water to go around, the Aussie Merino will continue to warm the world with its fantastic woolen products. But unfortunately, until there's a viable alternative for mulesing, then the future might be looking pretty grim for these lovely animals in terms of welfare and ethical sustainability. All right, well, that's all we have time for today. Thanks for coming on the show, Ben. No worries, Ben. <laughs> and you too, Ben. It's my pleasure, Ben. Well, tune in next time for more low-budget action. This has been HAR Live. Thanks for watching. <laughs>